here it looks like I've actually bolted the seat through so to do this I just sat in it supporting the bottom of the seat with a crate and tried to center it up as best as possible while I was sitting in there holding it and marking it with a, a punch going through the frame through hole and marking the plastic seat I drilled through and uh, bolted it together on the other side to do the same thing and to get the height correct you uh, you put a spacer in between the, the frame and the seat and you drill where it should be so this can pivot up around here until you get where you want it you drill your holes you put your spacer in and then you put the bolt through and you have the correct right height and angle for the seat this is a better picture of those bolts going through the bottom and through the sides this is me sitting again to make sure there's enough clearance between my back and the engine I have a uh, you know it elevated still on these crates this is just a mock-up here I am ready to make those pins so I've gotten a uh, a center drill so I've center drilled the uh, the rod I'm using a live center here and I'm turning down the diameter of this pin to fit inside the go-kart frame tubing I've gotten a mill at this point I knew I would need a machine aluminum so I've got a Harbor Freight mill here are those pins right here that'll connect the extension pieces and I'll get to these pieces in a little bit so here's the rod half of it's going on the, the extension piece and half of it is going in the existing frame so I plan to run a bead a weld bead on this to connect it and then on this side to connect it so this is a mock-up of what it will look like the ID of the frame is slightly different than the extension piece I use just because this is a, a US standard size and this is a European side a metric size I believe they're 32 millimeter OD and maybe two millimeter thick wall so here's connecting it one pins on this side and one pins on this side this is just a mock-up Also, uh, to actually cut the frame, I used a, a Harbor Freight uh, reciprocating saw. I made it very easy. And I used the, the saw to get a straight cut from going to here to here. Any other, uh, like if I use an angle grinder, I always uh, come out crooked. So it was just much easier to use that same saw blade at the same time uh, and cut these. Here I'm still mocking it up to make sure everything will work out. Here you can see the extension piece is out. It's just uh, the rod at this point. This is just a looks like a close up of me using the mill for the first time on aluminum. Here's my setup with a uh, with a vise. So here I've measured out how long I need the extension piece to be across all three of these. And I have the frame sitting here. I know that there needs to be clearance right here between me and the engine and between the axle and the exhaust pipe. This is just me testing stainless steel and aluminum with the lathe. So here I've actually welded the pieces also uh, the the rod I used on the inside of here is just mild steel all three of these are mild steel the extension piece the the rod and the cart frame I confirmed with uh, a supplier for the cart frame that it was not uh, it was not a higher higher strength alloy steel and it was just normal normal carbon steel so I could weld them with no issues so 
I welded all three pins at this point, you can see the difference in diameters of when I turned it between the cart frame and the extension side. So now I've welded it and it looks like I painted it over to, to mock up what it would look like. I think at this point I designed a small biaser because there are two master cylinders. One master cylinder controls the rear brake and the other one goes to two front brakes. So you have one master cylinder going to a, uh, a certain size slave cylinder. But then on this one, this uh, is the same exact size master cylinder, but it's having to feed two slave cylinders. So this has to go at a to get equal braking, this has to go at a higher rate of extension to fill the slave cylinders. So this is a, a thing, a, a design I made to allow that. So basically I cut a slot and a little plate right here and set this bolt where I need it to be. And uh, to keep it in place, I made a little through hole right here in the side of the plate. You can't tell, but this is at a 90 degree angle to this plate. And here's a an adjuster to make sure it cannot move within this slot. So that's just a, uh, I think it's a bolt, and I think I welded a nut to the side of this larger nut, and this bolt threads into it. So this line goes to the brake the brake pedal. So when you pull on the pedal, this entire thing goes, and it pivots around this bolt, uh, with this side extending further than uh, the rear brake. Here's a full picture of it connecting it from here to here. The issue I was having was clearance issues with the tie rod right here. So at full extension, if I pressed on the brake pedal, this would extend forward, but if I turned the wheel, this would go upward and interfere right here. You can see I was scratching it up a bit. This is just a test piece doing my first coping cut uh, in preparation for welding the frame. Here is the small aluminum adapter I made to, ex to shift the, uh, the brake biaser back a bit so it doesn't interfere right here. So basically it takes this and just shifts it back. I made this with the Harbor Freight mill. You have the clevis right here going through and this turns into a clevis right here and this is the brake pedal. These little custom pins I made with the mill and drilled through uh, I made these with the lathe and drilled through with the mill and I put a little, uh, I think a paper clip here to lock these in place so it can't slide out. This is the first mounting tube for the engine. So those pieces I mentioned earlier, uh, they're just small cuts of tubing that I welded to little flat plates and cut them into squares. Then I drilled a hole through that plate and a bolt goes through that plate and uses the normal R1 mounting points on the engine. That connects the engine directly to the frame down here. So there are three mounting points on each side of the R1 engine. One right here, one right here. So this is held on with a bolt right now. And then one down here, you can't see it. So I decided to add a fourth uh, bar right here because I, I, I didn't feel comfortable with just three bearing housing supporting that kind of torque going through it. So I've uh, cut a length out and I had these two connecting it to this. Here everything is just tack welded. I also at a later point make a uh, a bracket for the bearing housing to bolt to. It's basically just a copy of these right here. Here I am actually welding these uh, support tubes. So to make sure the engine is square with the frame I'm using plumb lines basically to make sure 
the engine is centered in between the frame and also vertical and not rotated around any axis. This uh, goes up at a slightly different angle than this. It's hard to tell from the picture. You see, so you can see this is at a steeper angle than this. And it's also a different length. So I had to make sure everything was correct before tack welding everything. Here, everything is tack welded, and I've removed the engine from that, uh, my little support. At this point, it's a rolling chassis, and uh, I think I've started to play with the, uh, the sprocket. I've attached the chain to the sprocket and started to experiment with that. Here, I got excited on my first uh, test run that I, I hooked the battery up backwards and blew the master fuse, so I replaced it. As you can see, I've attached the, the chain going to the engine right here. The issue is because that sprocket is not designed and it's a little loose, I can't get it concentric uh, just by eye. So whenever it the chain goes around and you have, have a uh, the sprocket out further, it'll pull which pulls on the uh, the uh, the front sprocket, which pulls on the frame. So this entire thing was flexing every rotation of the axle. That was a major issue. Here's a side view. Here's a front sprocket up here, rear sprocket. Here I'm starting to make the hand shifters. So I needed a right hand shift linkage and integrate the uh, the clutch lever into it. So I welded a little plate right here to the frame where it's comfortable for my arm to reach. Uh, two little tabs parallel to each other. I've drilled a hole through them so a, a bolt goes through this plate, through the, uh, the shift, the shifter, and out the other side so the shifter can pivot in there. Here I need more longitudinal support. So for instance, if, if I was braking very hard, this will go forward and this supports that movement. During all this time, I'm still playing with the, uh, the non-concentric issue with the, uh, the sprocket and it's still flexing. Even when I added these, it was still flexing the entire frame moving back and forth slightly whenever this would get to a tight point. So now I'm starting to add lateral support. So if I was going into a turn very sharply, the mass of the engine would try to go to one side. So this is adding more support for that. Looks like here I've also designed the shift linkage. So here's the shifter that can pivot. So if I were to go back on it, the motion is transferred along this bar, which then transfers motion to this. So this rotates through these little uh, oversized tubes that this bar goes through. Same for this side, this pivots backwards, transfers along here. This is the, uh, the normal foot shifter on the R1. This goes back, this goes forward, and transfers motion into the shifter, which is on a little shaft right here, and shifts the gear. Here I've made a bracket for the rear brake. Pretty self-explanatory. I was having clearance issues right here at the bottom of the frame and the uh, the stiff brake hose. So this so it took me a long time to get rid of because it's very thick aluminum. Here's a close up of that shifter. So here's the motion goes right here, transfers along here when this rotates and pushes back and forth. Here, uh, up until this point, I have not uh, installed the clutch correctly. I did not adjust the, the push rod. So basically, this is a little piece when this pulls in and out uh, it pulls on there's a spring on each of these you can see it right here there's a spring here's a spring right here uh, so when this goes outwards so say if I were to pull this push rod outwards it'll decompress those springs 
and there's nothing connecting all these clutch plates together so you basically 